Hello and welcome back to the channel. I'm Dawn. And I'm John, and together we're the two running brooms. Now, a brand new training series which will run through to the end of June will see us running Dawn's first ever ultra marathon event. That's right, guys, ultra marathon. <laughs> So we're standing at the minute on Ham Hill in Somerset. You can see behind us a quarry where they are quarrying the famous Ham Stone, which you see in many buildings around here. And the Ultra Run is going to take us all the way from here down to Lyme Regis on the Dorset coast. And it is called the Ham and Lyme 50k. So yeah, so I've never run an Ultra before. Uh, the furthest I've ever been is a marathon. And uh, I'm really looking forward to it. I have to say there's a few things I'm going to be looking to uh, discover about running ultra marathons. That's right, because we're not very experienced at ultra marathons. In fact, I've run one ultra marathon before, and that was on the 1st of July 2016. And this ultra marathon will be on the 1st of July 2023. So you can see my ultra marathon pattern is I only run ultras on the 1st <laughs> of July every seven years. So watch out for 2030, folks. Um, so given the fact that Dawn has never run an ultra before and I've only run one and that was on a pretty flat predictable surface we thought it'd be a good idea to reach out to Ben from the Time on Feet channel to seek his advice on running a trail ultra marathon. Ben is a very experienced uh, runner, he's an experienced ultra runner and uh, he does a lot of off-road running so his advice we thought would be invaluable. The route follows something called the Liberty Trail, which is a walk taken by villagers who were wishing to join the Monmouth Rebellion of 1685 at Lyme Regis. So during the course of the run, we'll be telling the story of the Monmouth Rebellion of 1685. So the first question we asked Ben was, should we be thinking of any changes in our normal weekly training mix? Perhaps things we need to add into our normal training, which is pretty much running up and down here. So it sounds like you've got a really good base in terms of mileage already and I would say that you don't necessarily need to up mileage um, but the only thing I would think about for ultra training in particular is just trying to mimic the terrain of the race that you'll be doing so that could be uh, being mindful of elevation so trying to get in some decent hills but also in terms of the terrain underfoot what that is going to be like as much as possible you want to mimic that in your training the only other thing i would say is strength and conditioning um, i found that with running ultras that's been particularly important to do that religiously every week to ensure that you know when you're in those later miles and your body is feeling it then um, you've you've got the the strength in your muscles, the tendons, the ligaments to be able to carry you through and ensure you're going to get to the finish line successfully. So thanks Ben for that tip, so lesson absorbed and we have left the Trans Pennine Trail and we're going to be doing an off-road loop tonight. So the next question is about kit. Now when you're running a road marathon or any other road race it's basically shorts, a singlet, some socks and some trainers. But we realise when you are going a long distance and you're going off road you might need some different kit and some specialist kit. So we asked Ben for any tips on race day gear and kit. So ultra marathons typically have a mandatory kit list and that will often be things like um, a waterproof jacket with tape seams. Uh, it might be like a small first aid kit, it might be an extra base layer, but those are often good things to have with you because if you're out for a long time then conditions can change um, and particularly as you slow later in the race then your body temperature can drop to, so to ensure that you've got um, you know, kit for all weathers is important whilst also trying to make sure that you've, you've got things with you that are fairly light so they're not going to weigh you down too much. Um, aside from that, in terms of keeping comfortable, um, paying good attention to your feet is really crucial. I've had a couple of ultras where my feet have been quite trashed by the end 
um, and it's not fun. It doesn't make the, the later miles of the race particularly enjoyable. So thinking about things like socks, um, I go with toe socks, but they're not for everyone. Um, as long as you've got some socks that are gonna ensure that your feet are protected and, and, and don't rub. Um, to use Vaseline or Body Glide um, in areas that might chafe. So just paying attention to those, which you might do on marathons already, uh, but I think with ultra distances, um, particularly if you're going up and down as well on hills, that can mean that your, your feet might rub in particular places. So yeah, just being mindful of, of ensuring you're not gonna chafe anywhere is really crucial. <laughs> so one of the questions we asked Ben is about cows. I'm absolutely terrified of cows and I will go out of my way to avoid going through a field of them. So obviously when you're doing an ultra marathon and it's off-road there is a strong possibility that you're going to come across these lovely creatures. So Ben gave us the answer that I was looking for. So cows, well I would mainly say firstly that it's important to pass by them very quietly and to leave good space between you and them. Um, the other thing I'd also say is that if you're running in a group in the ultra, then to make sure if you're passing cows, then stick together so that you haven't got kind of one person going off this way, one person off going that way, because that can be much more likely to spook them. Um, so yeah, passing by them quietly, leaving good space uh, and sticking in a group as well. Um, and yeah, and it might be that you want to walk by them as well. So even if you're running in the race and just when you get to the, the cows, then to walk by them carefully um, so there's no stampede. Between us, John and I have done quite a few marathons and to fuel for those marathons, a lot of the actual fueling comes in the few days before you actually run the race. And then when you run the race, you're normally taking on maybe some gels and some sips of water. However, for an ultra marathon, you're going to be on your feet a lot longer. So we wonder, do we have to change our fueling strategy to actually incorporate the amount of time we're going to be on our feet? And yes, as somebody who sweats quite a lot when I run, I'm particularly interested in the hydration angle. I don't want to get into bother. I've seen a few videos of people running ultras and really suffered hydration wise. So really interested to see what Ben has got to say about that. So we put this question to Ben and this is his answer. So you might not necessarily need to change your fueling strategy at all from road marathon to ultra. The most important thing is to find what works for you and practice your fueling and nutrition strategy before race day. So particularly on your long runs in your training schedule for the week. At ultras, the foods that you'll find on aid stations will be quite different from road marathons because often it looks like, um, I heard ultra runner Damien Hall, so elite ultra runner describe uh, ultra aid stations as like an abandoned children's party. You often find like lots of little bits of food in cups. Um, you'll have biscuits, sweets, uh, sandwiches, crisps. So if you want to be able to get food from aid stations, then it's worth practicing with that kind of stuff before race day. But at the same time, if you've used gels before uh, and sports drinks and they work for you, then you might want to stick with those. But the key mantra here would be nothing new on race day. Ensure that you've got your stomach used to what you're gonna be using during your ultra. Uh, and whilst we're on aid stations as well, the other thing to think about there is just how you can move through them effectively because you don't want to be spending a huge amount of time at them um, because if you do, then you might seize up. So I would recommend getting your bottles filled, taking out the bits of food that you want and then eating them as you're walking out of the aid station. And that can mean that firstly, you, you won't seize up, but also that you'll be um, you know, moving forward through the ultra with a slightly lighter load because you'll have eaten and drunk some of the stuff that you've taken from the aid station. So the final question we raised with Ben was about navigation. That's right, in a road race it's pretty hard to go off course unless it's particularly poorly organised. Um, but on a long ultra marathon like this, I believe there's a lot of self-navigation required. You're not going to get big arrows every hundred yards or so. So we asked Ben if there are any particular tips he had on supporting our navigation over a 50k route from point to point across country. So over to Ben for the answer. So as much as possible, you want to be familiar with the route that you're going to be running for the ultra marathon. And ideally, if you can get out and recce the route, then that would be the best, because then you can essentially know all the twists and turns. You can know what's coming up. It also helps with knowing, oh, there's going to be a big hill here or there's going to be a technical descent. So yeah, if you can get out and recce the route, that would be ideal. 
Um, second best would be to have a, a good look at the map of the route um, so that you can get that in your mind. You know, if the route's too far away to recce, then just to have a look at, um, oh, there's a turn here, or I know when I get to this church or uh, this particular place, I'm taking a left. So yeah, to really get to know the route. Often race organisers will give a GPX file that you can load onto your watch as well. So if you've got a navigation watch, then to have the GPX file running in the background, then that's really, really good uh, just to, to give you confidence that you know where you're going. The other thing I would say about on race day um, is not to follow other people. So it can be tempting if you see a group out in front of you to just follow where they're going, but that can often mean that everyone gets lost. Um, so it's really important to, uh, even if you're you know, with others and, and they might uh, feel they know the route, just to ensure that you're checking the signs that yourself as well. So keeping a lookout and thinking, oh, is that a, a left turn there or a right turn? Um, and ultras can often be quite social. So in terms of people having a chat, so uh, it's a nice thing to do, but also you've got to remember to pay attention to, uh, to the signs or where you are on route as well. So thanks to Ben for all those tips which we'll be putting into practice in our training in the coming weeks. If you haven't seen Ben's channel, please go and check it out. It's great running content and it's something we watch on a regular basis and certainly worth a subscribe. Yeah, so thanks Ben. Uh, so please give us a thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed already, we'd love to have you on board. And so until next time, keep on keeping on. Keep on keeping on.